fifth game of round one of the 2022 Bank of Ireland Leinster Schools Senior Cup. It is Cistercian College Ross Gray taking on Wesley College. And already so far in the tournament this year, Blackrock, Kilkenny, Gonzaga and Newbridge have all gone through. And this is set to be a fascinating encounter between Ross Gray and Wesley. Both the teams already played each other once in the season. And that was in the Leinster League with Ross Gay, winning 29 points to 22. Alongside me today is former Irish international, Bridget Corrigan. Good to see you, Justin. Yes, really looking forward to today's game. Luckily, the weather appears to have held off for the moment. There was a lot of fear about the wind and rain and, of course, the storm coming a little bit early. It is quite breezy, but at the moment, the rain seems to have held off, so that should mean that we'll have a decent enough afternoon's rugby. Looking at both sides as they come out onto the pitch, plenty of physicality in both teams anyway, in particular, looking at the Ross Gray side. They seem to have some big players there, but um, both of these teams met in the league and it was a close encounter. Ross Gray winning that one just by seven points, so uh, really looking forward to what this game is going to bring. Ross Gray as well, they've got a lot of players who made the Irish under-18s clubs and schools team in the form of Max Flynn, Richie Whelan, Joe Coffey, Greg Fitzgerald, James Conroy and Ichi Oji who made Ireland under-19s, Wesley, they have a few, a very few good players in the form of Matt Golden, the fullback, Liam O'Neill, who's a good ball carrier, the Lockford and Oren Handley, the number eight. So they're coming up against quite a big task here, Reggie, but in the Inter School Senior Cup, anything can happen. Yeah, absolutely, and we've seen it already with some of the games this week. The level uh, and the standard of rugby has been exceptional, starting with that first game, of course, on Sunday with uh, Blackrock and St. Michael's. We were treated to a real thriller, and as you said, the standard since then hasn't dropped either. So, yes, uh, you know, it's exciting to see what we're going to witness here today and, and, and expecting a lot of things. One player I'm really interested in is OG that you mentioned there. He's enormous. I'm just looking down at him here, the winger. Uh, he wouldn't look out of place anywhere in the back row and uh, really intrigued to see what's going to happen when he gets his hands on the ball in the wing with a little bit of space. Ross Gray. Their captain today is number 13, Blaine Barry. And also both these sides, their performance in the Leinster League, they both got to the quarter-final. Ross Gray losing to Gonzaga and Wesley College losing to Kilkenny. And since 2013, they've played each other seven times, Ross Gray winning five of those and Wesley winning twice. Wonderful atmosphere here today as well, Justin. Both schools have turned out in massive numbers to cheer on their side. And that is really what schools rugby is all about. It's the support that comes. And uh, it's a long time ago, but I remember back to my own school's days and, and the enjoyment that you got out of it. But as a player, it was one of the pinnacles just to get out here on this Donnybrook surface in front of your entire school and get that opportunity to show what you can do and represent the school. So it's a wonderful day for all these young players and some will go on to other things in rugby and some may not, but they'll never forget the days they've had at schools rugby. Ross Gray, of course, the 2015 champions. And they're also finalists in 2016. Wesley College in 2020, 2019 and 2018 didn't make it past the first round. And the referee today is Colm Roach. So we are in good hands. It's a national panel referee officiated at the Dubai Sevens. And he's been a Leinster ref for the past 12 years. And always good to see the quality of refs who get to referee at Leinster School Senior Cup. Charlie Nocton is the 10 today for Ross Gray, Connacht and the 18. And we see the tight head prop over there, Rory Doody, also Munster under 18. So they've got that provincial pedigree and you'll get the feeling that Wesley College know this and they'll want to produce an upset here and get through to the next round. But it'll be important for Wesley to get a good start here. Uh, Ross Gray will be kicking off into them, so they'll want to make sure they deal with that kickoff quickly and, and, and get off to that good start and we're just seeing here at the bottom of our picture that is the winger I spoke about OG and on his inside is the hooker and the size difference between the two uh, you, you can see that the hooker is dwarfed by OG so as I said 
I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's like when that ball gets out to the wing to him. But as we said, Wesley receiving this kickoff, so it'll be important for them to deal with this kickoff well. There is, as I said, wind, and it's going to be a factor. It's slightly in Ross Gray's favour at the moment. They have the wind in their backs, but on a day like today, that could shift quite easily. Colin Wright just checking with his officials, and we almost set to go at Energy Park. Charlie Nocton, and it's taken by Durham, the outside centre, who takes contact. Really good carry by Liam O'Neill, the lock forward. Cameron Moran is at the base. And he goes with the box kick. And it's very well taken by Ross Gray. A superb carry in centre field. Yes, Glenn now. The lock forward. O'Muri knocked in. Almost an intercept by Toby Durham. And Ross Gray, pretty lucky there. Very lucky. It looked like he was gone, ball just slipping out of his fingertips as he'd read the situation well. And Ross Gray did have numbers on the outside. It was a little bit risky for Durham to come forward there, but he felt he'd read the situation well. And uh, could easily have been under the sticks had he managed to hold on to that as we watch it again here. Just reads the situation really well. Oh, he'll be disappointed with that afterwards when he looks back in the video. Probably should have held that ball. And with nobody at home in front of him, it was a guaranteed seven points. Amori with the feed. Charlie Nocton. It's a tester for Matty Golden. And he takes it well. Watch out for him. He's got good feet. A brilliant break by the fullback. Gets it to Morin. Exceptional stuff from the fullback. At the base, just the out half and Cassini and holds it. Is smashed hard in the tackle. Johnny Cassini, massive hit on the captain, Dan Campbell. Ichi Oji. Some really good defense by Ross Gray. But they do give away a penalty. And there's trouble here. Richie Whelan is getting a talking to from Colin Roach. Good work there by the Ross Gray defense. Very well organized. As I said, a hugely physical side. Much bigger than their Wesley opponents. But Wesley need to box clever here. You saw there a brilliant example where Golden used his footwork to find some space and get around the bigger players. And that's what Wesley need to do. They've got to try and get that ball shifted away from the uh, rook area. If they go in close and if they have one out runners like that, they're going to get smashed all day long by these big defenders that Ross Gray have. But if they can find some space on the outside and get some ball out to the wings, I think they may have a better chance of going around them. So early early on in this game already, uh, we saw a good example of the scrum as well. The first scrum, very good scrum by Wesley, put some pressure on the Ross Gray team. But early on, definite signs that Wesley would need to get width on this ball if they get through this Ross Gray team. Wesley do all scrum time. Cassini, a little dink ahead. And Joe Coffey collects the number six for Ross Gray. Omori. Paddy Sheeran smashed in the tackle. Charlie Nocton. Yes, James Conroy. Really good defense by his opposite, Jamie Fish. And Nocton. So Wesley definitely up for the test here from Ross Gray. They're not backing down at all. And Mori. And that time it was Clint. So just slowing things down, Ross Gray. Knocked in. And Maddie Golden. He's looking as safe as a house. And he's setting off once more, the fullback. And they get the penalty as well. It's a positive start for Wesley, and there's big trouble coming up here for James Conroy, the inside centre. Yeah, he was a little bit uh, unfortunate there, I think, Conroy, just uh, 
goal and losing his feet a little bit as he came into contact and just slipped into contact and high tackle given for that obviously that is the rule but it would have been harsh for it to be anything more but really impressed with the way Wesley are defending they've decided to go with a shoot around the line and in many cases we've seen it almost resulted in intercept uh, already but we, we saw brilliant defense coming in there as they're shooting out of the line and they've identified that perhaps Ross Gray are just a little bit slow at getting that ball moving along the line it's a risky tactic if you don't time it well and if you don't get it right, the ball can end up on the outside and a winger can find himself with no defender in front. But at the moment, it seems to be working well and they've uh, aligned themselves to putting pressure on that Ross Gray backline as they're moving forward. So, you know, <laughs> it's not a bad tactic so far. We'll see how it unfolds as the game progresses. So play it on. I wouldn't be a fan of what we saw first there from Johnny Cassini with that little dink through. I think they worked so hard to get possession, they want to hold on to that. And kicking the ball back to this Ross Gray side is not a tactic that they'd want to employ unless absolutely necessary. And in that last passage of play, I felt he had three or four uh, runners outside him that he could have used and maybe go through the phases a little bit more. Uh, it's so hard to get the ball in rugby uh, at times. The last thing you want to do is start kicking it away. So. No harm to test it out early, maybe, but uh, I'd hope that he's not going to continue uh, just kicking the ball away when they get it. And Wesley supporters will be very happy that Matty Golden is back on his feet. And that would have been very concerning. He's taken two good balls. And it will be Ryan Jones to feed. Interesting to see how this line out will go now. The wind, you can see it there on the touch judges flag. An important line out here for Wesley. They'll want to get this right. Dan Campbell, the captain, with the take. And Wesley with a great opportunity. Ryan Jones is at the back. And they've got the free play as well. Here goes Jones now, the hooker. Opportunity for Wesley inside the 22. Cazzini, a little dink over the top again. And we'll come back for the penalty at the roving wall. Yeah, I think Cassini knew he had that penalty coming. So safe bet to go for the dink there. Almost worked. But what a brilliant ball that was from Wesley. Set up really, really well. Ball taken in the lineup by Campbell, the captain. Uh, and then all of his forwards getting in around him. Really impressed. Although they're not physically as big as the Ross Gray players, they've got their body position set really well. And they got that leg drive going. Uh, and it forced uh, Ross Gray to give away that penalty and drag it down. Another opportunity here with this lineup to do something similar. So Ryan Jones to throw. And it's the captain once more, Campbell. Flicks it to Kagan. Ryan Jones is spinning the wheel at the back. And here comes, old, here comes Wesley now driving towards the line. Ryan Jones. So close for Ryan Jones. Agonizingly close. Gagan. Moran for Liam O'Neill. A golden opportunity now for Wesley. The pick and go from Lowry. Aaron Lowry scores the opening try for Wesley. Wonderful score there. Great patience in the build up. We said it before the line out, just go for the same thing again, get that leg drive going. And Ross Gray are not able to deal with that drive from the line out that Wesley have organized. We saw it again going to the captain Campbell. Good safe ball by him, good setup. I thought they had to score off the initial shunt that came through. We saw Ryan Jones just went slightly early. Maybe they were fortunate to just get away with that because it was just short of the line. They could have held on. He could have been a little bit more patient. Slight bit of white line fever coming into play there, but you can't blame the young man when he thought it was his opportunity to get that first score on the board. But like I said, brilliant leg drive from the Wesley pack, getting themselves into fantastic body positions. And you can see with Ross Gray, despite their physical ability, they're just not able to deal with that low drive. So Johnny Cassini. To add the extras.
drags that one to the right. But a really good start from Wesley in these opening eight minutes, Reggie. Phenomenal. And they've done everything correctly, as we said. They don't want to get into a wrestling match with these big boards and these big uh, backs that Ross Gray have in open field. They need to get th th those big players moving around and tire them out. And that's what they've done so well. They've changed the point of attack. They've moved the ball around. They've stepped off either foot. And they've uh, basically, you know, moved the big players around. And that's something Ross Gray won't want to go on. But Wesley certainly will. Good play by the captain there, Campbell. And here's O'Neill, who takes contact. A strong ball carrier. Morin back to Cassini. Looking for touch. And they've got the penalty as well. And Ross Gray need to be really careful with the amount of penalties that they're giving away at the moment. And good to see there from referee uh, Roach as well as he, as he was watching that offside line so many times now, whether it be in schools or provincial or international level, that offside line is just not set behind the base of the rope. And it's killing the opportunity for teams to attack. And it's great to see that at this level it's being picked up on straight away and teams are being forced to give the correct spacings there. So that should, in, in theory, lead to more open play. This Wesley side also have an experienced side. 12 of the starting 15 are sixth years. Whereas Ross Gray, it's more of an even balance. Ross Gray have got to find some way to challenge this Wesley line out. They've got a pod set up there of three players. Uh, and they're just trying, going to try and read it and come back with it, but they've got to find a way to get somebody in the air and challenge on this throw. Ryan Jones, Joe Neal. Some variation shown by Wesley. Morin for Lari, the try scorer, the tight head prop. And he's driven back in the tackle by Coffey. Morin goes on the short side of Campbell and Kagan this time. And Ross Gray over the ball here almost. Happy to just carry it into contact. And Morin using the Caterpillar Ruck. It's a good effect. And Fitzgerald with the carry. Really competitive with that breakdown. Little Finn Northern, the right winger. With the seal into touch. Really good work there from Wesley. You, you can see from the carry as it comes in here, the Ross Gray players are just too slow. Look how slow they are at getting in. It allows Wesley and O'Neill to get in there and get on that ball and just create a little bit of uncertainty and Nolan getting in there, getting his hands on the ball and turning it over. They've got to work out uh, what players are going into that breakdown for, for Ross Gray and get over it. And it's a mess at line out time. Hulseth with the carry. He's struggling to lay that one back. Morin for Folds. The loose head prop. Cazzini could play in centre field. And Durham has done really well there. They've got another penalty, Wesley. So many penalties in the opening 12 minutes. Offside again, and you can see it in the line. We're looking straight down at it. There's three players standing virtually in the Wesley line. They're so far offside, it, it gives the referee no option. But uh, it's playing right into the, the hands of Wesley because, you know, they're just building territory, uh, getting themselves into good positions. They're probably maybe a little bit far out for him, but he is going to have a go at it. But that, with that wind, maybe uh, it might be a bit of a tester. But uh, again, we saw mistakes at line-out time from Roscoe. Their throw-in, not getting it organised. It went down, in fact, pretty much down the Wesley side of the line-out. So it was a crooked throw and misdirected. So Ross Gray haven't got any form of football. They've had no possession in this game so far. Uh, and they haven't gotten themselves into it at all. So from a Wesley point of view, things couldn't be going better. Uh, they're putting pressure on at scrum time. They're winning their line-outs. And they're getting the penalties. So Ross Gray will really need to have a, a bit of a rethink about this and, and the tactics that they're employing. So Cazzini missed his first attempt at goal. Ross Gray just seemed to be a little bit, almost, you know, deer in the headlights-ish at the moment. They just haven't settled into this game. They haven't allowed themselves. They're snatching at things. They're forcing things at line out. They need to just settle down a little bit and trust themselves. Johnny Cazzini. 
off the woodwork. And here's Whelan now for Conroy, the inside center, breaking one tackle. He's tackled by the try scorer, Lowry. Ichioji, the right winger in the mix. Omori looking right and left. Back to Nocton, who's under huge pressure. And Cassini, a little chip over the top. Nocton under huge pressure there, as you say. And the pass from Omori just put him under pressure. It was kind of one of those floaty passes. You see it there, and not really on target. But look at the chase from Wesley, the eagerness of those players to get up there and try and force that block down. Also, I like to see uh, Ichi Oji. Good to see him trying to get involved in the game. But, you know, when your winger is coming in like that and having to try and go rooting for the ball, they've got to try and find ways to bring him in. Scrappy at line out time once more for Ross Gray. And Murray and Whelan with a really strong parry, but he loses it forward. Exceptional stuff from Wesley to get the turnover. O'Neill showing hands. Brilliant hands by Cassini. And Ichi Oji tackles Matty Golden. And Lowry has had the ball stripped. And Duty gathers that one back. Cho Coffey. A ferocious carry. Ross Gray trying to get back into this game. Nocton with the dummy. And planted in the tackle. Glenn. And Fadden this time. And Mori, and he's tackled by Ryan Jones, the hooker. Glenn. And he has Max Flynn. Coffee. Starting to get involved. And that's a big tackle on him as well. Good defense shown by Wesley. And Nocton decides to get some territory. And here goes Matty Golden. What an off blow that was. Brilliant stuff. Toby Durham, the outside center. Wesley are really up for this contest. And they've got the free play as well. Really enjoying themselves out here. What a break that was from Matthew Golden. Took the ball beautifully in the air. Never took his eye off it. Looks up, sees where there might be a bit of space. And then that step. But look at that offload. Beautiful hands to Durham and the speed of him to get through. Just a little bit delayed with the, the runners that were coming with them. Finn Nolan eventually getting there, almost getting tackled as he received the ball on that occasion. But that forced Ross Gray into giving that offside position again and giving away another penalty. The back three in particular for Wesley looking exciting. You've seen Golden, Nolan's been involved a bit as well. Uh, there's certainly a lot of pace in there and Ross Gray are just having a lot of difficulty dealing with that. Also, Toby Durham, serious pace in the centre too. He can certainly... Uh, Turn a, turn a pace when he gets some space out there in the ball so Wesley are pretty much doing everything right at the moment and uh, Ross Gray are struggling we saw the defensive line was so strong from Wesley that after five or six phases they had to go back to that kick and we saw Nocton putting that ball up and that's just a real sign that the team have run out of ideas when that's happening be better to see some of the bigger ball carriers from Ross Gray maybe taking some uh, shorter lines and just trying to plow into that uh, Wesley defence because as I said you know it's well organised but they just don't seem to be punching into the line it's, they're almost stopping as they get through the line so they need to try and find a way to get through the line and look for some offloads after the tackle and also, Reggie, maybe you just get the feeling that with 12 out of the starting 15 from Wesley being in sixth years, they determined for this to not be their last serious game. Yeah, absolutely. With their, their attitude so far, their speed, their pace of getting up, chasing down balls, anything that's going loose, they're on it straight away. They're making scramble defense tackles. Uh, you know, they're, they're running good support lines for those offloads. So at the moment, they just look the hungrier of the two sides. Dara Guinan is on the park now for Osgrave. And it looks like 
Richie Whelan is off the park, and that will be a massive blow. An Ireland under 18 school squad player. Expect to see a drive coming in here again. We saw Campbell the last couple of times. So will they go towards him again? Certainly easier to lift. They get plenty of height on him. The ever present Dan Campbell. Here comes the drive. It's looking beautiful from Wesley. And Ryan Jones needs to be careful not to get too isolated. Kaigan. Hull set for the pop pass to Hanley. Slow ball for Wesley. Campbell. But it's a perfect opportunity to get the second try of the game. Morin for O'Neill. Morin goes right to the captain, Campbell. Morin sniping. Morin scores for Wesley. Second try of the game. Really brilliant opportunistic try there by the scrum half. I have to say, I felt in the build up to that though, Ross Gray were somewhat hard done by. We saw a couple of times the players getting isolated and Ross Gray getting in there and getting hands on the ball. The referee not seeing it, but nonetheless, brilliant vision there from the scrum half, Cameron Moran, to see that opportunity, throw that dummy, and then coaching terms, it's always a fatal mistake to leave that pillar, as they call it, around the fringe of the rook open and to not man that area. Every scrum half worth his salt will throw that dummy and throw and go down that channel. If you don't man up and uh, have somebody on that pillar, they'll be gone. And there's a perfect example of it. Well, who would have expected this after 18 minutes out here at Energy Park? The underdogs, Wesley, 10 points up, two tries on the board through Aaron Lowry and Cameron Moran. And Cassini has the opportunity to make it 12-0 to Wesley. And this time, Johnny Cassini makes no mistake. It's Wesley 12, Ross Gray 0. Well, they're well worthy of that lead as things stand at the moment. They've provided all of the play. Uh, any, anything, you know, in a go-forward situation has been all around Wesley. And, and yet, Ross Gray, as I said, they just haven't really had any possession. Can't get their hands on that ball. Set piece not quite functioning. And they've got to find a way to get back into this game quickly. And the try scorer, Morin. Real opportunity here now for Ross Gray. It's a bit of a missed kick. You know, they find themselves just outside the 22. They need to settle things down, go to a banker ball at line out time, get some possession, find their way into some phases and build some confidence up again. Because this is a crucial period of the game for, for Ross Gray. Saron and Leiden. Connacht. Under 18 with the feed to Rory Glynn. Leiden into his opposite number, Ryan Jones, and also Liam O'Neill. Omori, and yes, Paddy Sheeran, tackled by the captain Campbell. James Conroy back on the inside to Cho Coffey. Some exceptional defense by Lowry and Folds, the two props working in tandem. And it's a turnover. Absolutely outstanding from Wesley. Wonderful play again. There's just no way through that Wesley defense. You know, we're, we're here and we're trying to say they've got to go through some phases, they've got to find ways to, to, to penetrate and get the ball through the hands but the, there is literally no way through that Wesley defense the speed of the defensive line coming forward to make the tackles but also at the point of impact the the effect that they're having they're driving back that ball carrier every single time and you know it's just frustrating so the outside backs for Ross Gray the likes of Nocton the likes of Conroy and, and Barry in the center they just haven't seen the ball yet they haven't had an opportunity to get near it and we certainly haven't seen the ball get out to the wing to OG so you know it's completely nullified any sort of an attacking threat that Ross Gray have had with the defense that Wesley have had it's been impeccable 
wonderful turnover as well though you know they they went in and Lowry it was a double team tackle initially and Lowry went in and worked particularly hard to keep the player in the air and in doing so managed to get his hands on the ball and rip it away and cause that turnover and now from that they have this uh, ball back in their possession the two props working for each other Sean Folds and Aaron Lowry just the other fixtures coming up on irishrugbylive.ie displayed and also it looks like Maddie Golden is coming off the park he's been top class that's a huge blow he's been absolutely electric so far in this game you can see the devastation on his face coming off but what a wonderful contribution he's had so far in this game Hugo Girardi, the Frenchman on the park for Wesley. Morin for Jamie Fish, hitting the line. The inside centre. Morin for Ryan Jones. He's also been industrious, the hooker. Looking really composed. Cazzini. And Nocton lets it bounce. Yes, Flynn now. The number eight. It's a loose ball. Omori has to lay it back. Leiden. Some good play in center field and folds is folded like a deck chair there. Omori for Conroy Nocton. It is going back here at the moment. An opportunity low for Conroy to fend off the lock forward. Leiden for Ichioji. Superb carry by the right winger. Nocton drops the bucket. Oh. Glenn. It's Looked play like on. a knock on. Omori. And Conroy there, strong inside center. Flynn getting involved. Just offside there, coming in from the side, I think it was the call. But again, you see that Wesley defense, they're willing to sacrifice the outside every time. If Ross Craig could just identify that and, and realize that the winger's coming in every single time and just float a little one over the top, even basketball like over the top, there was two players on the outside there waiting for that pass, but there was just no way through because of the way that they came in and they sort of um, umbrella defense like to, to try and, and, and stop the passing out along the line. But there is an opportunity for him to go to the corner here. And uh, the line out worked well the last time, so they really need to try and bring in the big forwards that they've had. We've seen they haven't been able to deal with their Osprey drive, uh, or sorry, with the Wesley drive in those lineouts, but we haven't seen if Ross Gray have a drive of their own. I'd love to see them go towards the corner with a kick here, set up a mall, and try and get some drive going towards the Wesley line and, and ask some questions of the Wesley lineout mall defense and see what they're made of. So Colm Roach, the referee, just checking with the medics. There's other HIA, I think, or maybe it's a nose injury. And obviously, no chances ever taken. It does look like a nose injury. Uh, but no chances taken with anything around the head area. So they'll get him off, get him assessed, and work it out from there. There goes the kick. It's a good kick, too. Two brothers on the park. Now for Wesley in the form of Reen Hanley in the number eight. Oren Hanley, Reen Hanley on for the injured Ryan Jones. And Ross Gray's first real opportunity to have a crack at it. Got to get this one right, Justin. They have to set this line out ball up. Something simple. Set it up, get the drive going. Just fathom with the take. Cho Coffey, the blindside flanker. Steaming ahead and Campbell is opposite, doing a really good job. The skipper Omori to Conroy Big opportunity now for Ross Gray Patty Sheeran 
the loose head prop. Ichioji. He's a lean, mean, try scoring machine. He and what there. a finish that is what for the right winger. Finish. He came looking from early on. He's standing out there on that outside channel. And that's exactly what we said Ross Gray needed to do. Brilliant line out drive. Watch OG as he's standing out on that left hand side, just lurking. Give me the ball. I want it. Three of them on him. Then come two more. He tried to stop him, but with his size, he's just able to twist and turn and get himself over that line. And that is exactly the response that Ross Gray needed to get themselves back into this game. All coming from their first set piece that's actually worked properly today. A good line out, well set up, and a perfectly executed drive. Ichioji, the right winger. Well, He's been Ross Gray's top try scorer this season. A lean, mean try scoring machine. And he's got his side back into the game. Charlie Nocton. To make it a five point ball game out here at Energy Park. And he's dragged that one through the left. So it's a seven-point ball game in the favor of Wesley after 25 minutes. What a game it's been. More importantly, though, it settles Ross Gray into this game, gives them that little bit of confidence. The heads had slightly dropped after they conceded that second try, but now, with it being a one-score game, they're right back in it again. They'll realize that you know, they have the power, they have the ability to do it with that forward pack that they have. They just need to try and find some decent possession, hold on to it, and get it to them again. So it's taken by Fitzgerald, who knocks it into touch. Not too much distance, but he didn't have much of an angle. Let's see how Wesley respond to this. They've had, as we said, Golden gone off injured. Um, there's been a few changes. They've been a little bit disrupted in the last sort of 10 minutes with injuries and repositioning of players. And that always takes a little bit of time to settle down. But they'll need to get this line out organized and sorted out again and try and get that drive going because that's been their most effective weapon. So Tesla for the substitute hooker. And Ross Gray with the turnover. Good work at line out time. And it looks like Dan Campbell, the captain, is down for Wesley, and that is very concerning. Yeah, he went straight down from that lineout. Hasn't moved since. They're playing on. They're going to stop it now. Yeah, but uh, I think it's a bad injury. They're calling for uh, the sideline straight away. He may well have come down awkwardly on an ankle or a knee or something like that. So they're not going to take any chances. But as we said it from that lineout, you watch it here again. So important they got this right and it just didn't. It should have been taken really, but they just couldn't get their hands on it. it looked like maybe from Ross Gray that Fallon may have gotten in there and just got a hand in and disrupted it but uh, you know as we said at a critical moment in the game where they needed to just do the basics right uh, error creeping in again and that, that will all feed into the mindset for Ross Gray that you know we've got these guys rattled we've got an opportunity to turn them over now they've picked up another injury so all of a sudden from a situation where really for the first 15 20 minutes of this game Ross Gray weren't in it the momentum seems to be shifting in their direction and this will also be a big loss. Campbell, the captain, the leader. He's yeah. been impeccable in the first 27 minutes. Ryan Jones is back on the park, the hooker, for Wesley. It's very worrying because he hasn't really moved from the moment that he hit the ground. And uh, the uh, medical staff certainly seem to be quite concerned about it. Uh, and he can, you can quite clearly see he's in a lot of pain. So... This is not what we want to see, unfortunately. One of the uh, sad moments as you see the stretcher coming out onto the pitch. Probably an ankle or a knee injury from the way he seems to be positioned on the ground. It doesn't seem to be anything uh, in his upper body, so we're going to have to wait and see. But, uh, yeah, it's not, not the kind of thing we like to see. And this is difficult for the players as well. You know, they've got to try and refocus and they'll come in together into a huddle there'll be a lengthy delay now while they deal with this one and they'll have to try and come into a huddle and keep focused from a Ross Gray point of view they probably feel that the game was swinging in their favour so they would have wanted it to continue and Wesley will be coming in now trying to just settle things down a little bit and have a chat and refocus but it's been a wonderful game so far some really good rugby 
as we said, likes of Matthew Golden in the early stage of the game, showing brilliant footwork, showing his ability to uh, find some space. Cameron Moran also at scrum half, with good distribution, but also asking questions around the fringe in that defence. From a Ross Gray point of view, we were a bit disappointed with them in the early stages, but their defence was standing firm as well at times, and uh, they seem to have realised that we've got to maybe go route one, which is through the forwards on this, and then drag in the defensive line from Wesley, and when that opportunity opens up, then we can bring in some of the back line, because it certainly wasn't there initially. So Wesley College now have lost Maddie Golden and Dan Campbell, and this, even though they are seven points ahead, it's going to be a mountain to climb now. And coach Patrick Collins, the former youth development coach for Munster, he'll be thinking heavily about what to do now, which players to bring on. Yeah, the, from a Wesley point of view, it's all about game management now. You know, you can't stop playing. Yeah, they, they, they've gotten themselves into the position where they were leading this game uh, out of sheer wantonness to play the game and move it around go and attack, force errors out of Ross Gray, and that's got to continue to be the mindset. Often when teams go ahead and they feel, OK, we're in control here, they forget what got them there in the first place. So they've got to continue to play that style of game. As you say, a couple of injuries may affect that, but ultimately that's why we've got such big squads now, Every, and, and teams uh, have always got good quality on the bench. So. You've got to trust those players to continue with the game plan that you put in place in the first place and, uh, and make that happen and, and, and continue to do so. Because I guarantee you, if Wesley were to sit back now and stop playing, well, Ross Gray are just going to walk all over them and take control of this game and go on to win it. So it's, it's hard. It's not an easy thing to do, to have the confidence and the faith to uh, keep going with that style of game. Um, but that's what they've got to do. From a Ross Gray point of view, They've had maybe a 25-minute period where they were shell-shocked and they didn't really seem to know what hit them. Um, I don't think they were expecting maybe Wesley to come out as ferociously as they did with the physicality that they did and with the speed of line runners that they had. Uh, and, and, and like I said, they were just kind of caught off guard with that. But now they've settled themselves down a little bit, realised, OK, we know what they can throw at us. We can't afford to kick ball back to them. We've got to hold on to possession, maintain it, maybe play some territory, play some field position, kick to the corners when, when the opportunity is there, try and win those penalties, set up our driving ball and go from there. What an opportunity now for Chris Collins, the number 18, who looks to replace the skipper, Dan Campbell. Really taking their time over this injury. Uh, the medics ensuring that they make the player as comfortable as possible before they get them onto that stretcher. Still three games left of round one. St. Mary's College are busy playing CUS. Belvedere College taking on St. Vincent's, Vincent's Castle Knock tomorrow, as well as Tyrannia College taking on St. Fintan's. And also, of course, the draw will take place tomorrow for the next round. And the players just doing everything they can to keep warm. Still plenty of time left for this game for a stoppage like this on the 26th minute. Still a few minutes till half time. Yeah, there's, um, there's no doubt there's still plenty of uh, rugby left in this game. and. As I said, the momentum had just started to swing towards Ross Gray in that last 10-minute period. So um, the break isn't actually in their favour. They would they would want to have continued on the way things were because of that momentum. And it's almost like starting another game all over again when you get a break of this length. Ross Gray, they've produced some brilliant players over the years recently Fanine and Josh Witcherly and also for Wesley College class of 2019 Sam Illo who recently made his Connacht debut also former Ireland under 20 
course, the longer this delay goes on as well, the more likely there might be a change in the weather. We can certainly feel a bit of wind whipping up around us here. We've been uh, very fortunate so far that with all of the adverse weather that's been forecast, we haven't really been hit with it, but the longer these delays go on, the longer the chance that uh, that might be the case. But you can see now they're just trying to get Campbell onto that stretcher and secure. It looks like they're trying to secure his leg as well before they move him, so every precaution being taken. You've got to feel for the player at Lentz, the school senior cup. Yeah. First round, having an absolute cracker of a game, actually a game to remember in these opening 26 minutes, perhaps probably the standout player. And that's when rugby is just unfair. It's very, it can be very cruel at times, there's no doubt about it. You build yourself up and you're waiting all year for this moment and then to get injured in, in such a fashion, it's, it, is, it is very cruel. All sport can be that way, but the most important thing is that he's okay and that... Um, you know th 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 his welfare and that they're going to take care of him so obviously as long as that needs that's what they'll give it The other game today, of course, CUS. We're getting word are leading 14 points to five. So that's somewhat of a, an interesting result as well to see what way that finishes up. As you said, the draw will be made after this round of fixtures. I suppose everybody, and it's only natural, will be looking to Black Rock and seeing can they avoid them. That's always the way. You, you kind of want to go as far as you can before you have to actually meet Black Rock and watching them last Sunday against St. Michael's they're very obviously the favourites for the tournament but that being said, pre-pandemic I've commentated on games here and uh, there was quite a number of shocks Michael's causing one of them Gonzaga, we've seen Newbridge many teams have changed the landscape of this senior cup so it's not always a foregone conclusion but certainly i watched that black rock team on sunday and they were a very solid team very well drilled uh, just slightly edging michaels as we see campbell going off the pitch to a round of applause from all of the spectators standing to, to clap him off the pitch and it's a sad sight not one we like to see in rugby dan campbell the skipper outstanding in this first half and a pity to see him leave the field but we really hope that he is all right and now the test is for wesley can they cope without their talismanic leader that is the question well, they've got to defend this scrum first of all the scrum has gone well so far in the game for them good body height putting pressure on Ross Gray it's a Ross Gray scrum though and they'll be looking to get territory now get down the pitch a little bit Nocton and a little kick pass here for Ichi Oji it doesn't work out Toby Durham the outside centre playing with fire Ross Gray folds Morin Hanley looking to get his arms free in the tackle Morin unorthodox kick over the top and it's taken by Ichioji the try scorer so much strength and Wesley have poached it Morin for folds Morin Cazzini good defense by Ross Gray but there's an opportunity here for Fish it's tackled by Leiden Morin and that's been charged was that the correct option Wesley still have this ball just about and it's all about game management O'Neill 
taking contact, Cho Coffey. Cazzini, brilliant footwork, absolutely sensational from Cazzini, Ryan Jones. And some incredible play. Low blast and the whistle from the referee, he wants to talk to somebody. We could be seeing further action here, we may be seeing a card, indeed we are, uh, illegally coming in. But a wonderful piece of play there, no question from Cazzini. What a break that was from him. And in that build-up, I was so frustrated. Twice they tried to kick balls over the top, and we said the importance of maintaining possession when they had it. We saw it once from Moran where he tried a little side-footed dink over the top, which just, did, just didn't work. The counter rook from Wesley to win the ball initially was quite incredible, but a wonderful break there from Cazzini. A deliberate knockdown is the call from the referee. So it's a yellow card, and now... You know, in a situation where we felt the momentum had swung in Ross Gray's favour, Wesley just came out again, like they did at the very start of the game, running the ball, moving it around really, really well, counter-rooking excellently, and there was a chance there as well. I think if Cassini had a look to his right, we may see the breakaway again. Just saw an opportunity where if that ball had, if he had a look to his right, I thought there was support on the outside. In the end, he found Ryan Jones, who was just held up short, but again, look at that. Good drive coming in. Support comes in quickly. Ball is available there. Hands are great. Watch this step. Lovely off the left foot. Now, if he just had a look right there, he'd gone to his right on that occasion. Instead of taking that last step, there was support players on the outside. Nonetheless, they had the three points, and that will settle them after that big break and the loss of Campbell. And that is half time. Wesley 15. Ross Gray, five. And this game is poised in quite an interesting way, Reggie. Yeah. You've got Wesley who have scored the opening two tries. They've been brilliant, but they've lost two key players. Ross Gray, they just really haven't got out of the changing rooms. They're not playing up to their standards at the moment, but there's a big second half to come here. And you've got the feeling that Ross Gray will get their chances in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. The coaches will be bringing them in and talking to them, explaining to them, look, just before that break, we had, we, we got ourselves into our game and we got an opportunity to take those that score and work our way into the pitch. We've got to get back to that. You know, they'll feel they got away with one there, probably three points. It was not a bad return. Could easily have been another seven that they gave away. So there's still all to play for from a Ross Gray point of view, but they've got to get that message in of getting possession, holding on to it, and just trying to play some territory and then asking questions of that Wesley defence.
second half underway wesley in front ichi oji what will he do he has a crack beats two defenders and he's setting off and he gets the offload away to conroy and that ball's gone into touch almost into touch brilliantly kept alive by leiden glenn the lock showing some good skills Holseth trying to get the seal Omori for coffee little flick on the inside Tessa for Nolan and Cassini comes away with it he's having a stormer at the moment Lowry the tight end prop with the carry O'Neill it's had a big shift. Kazini, Ichi Oji with the intercepts. That was a big punch from Ichi Oji. Wesley were looking dangerous. Glenn, a big don't argue. Knocked in. Oji starting to get involved. Palmer rocking, but it's illegal that time. The captain, the standing captain there, Tom Gagan. Yeah, just the initial counter rock was perfect, but then he went off his feet and wasn't supporting his body rate and dived on the ball. If he had him just left the ball alone and continued with the counter rock, it would have been perfectly fine. But once he tried to play that ball, uh, it was illegal. Now, what a start that was to the second half. We're seeing already Ross Gray trying to bring uh, Ichioji into the game early doors. It takes three players to tackle him every single time. Uh, but when they do get turnover then, Wesley, again, their willingness to move that ball, run hard at defenders, try and find some space. We see Kazani again with another wonderful break on the outside and playing that ball back inside to tighthead Alan R Lowry, who... Uh, as all good props know, only knows one direction, that's straightforward. But it was brilliant by him as well, good recycling the ball. But a good turnover in the end from Ross Gray, and now they've managed to get themselves into a really good attacking position. Big Paddy O'Connor on number 18. Built like a brick house. The front of that line out. And up goes Coffey. Omori. Good play from Sharon. Fallon. And he has an opportunity now, Durham, for Crooks. And OG with perhaps a crucial block. Important block. If that ball had gone over the top, I think we would have seen it gone again. Just forcing the pass here. We see it coming from Fallon. It just kind of passes without looking now the runner may have just overstepped it a little bit but uh, that kick over the top from Crooks he was just trying to drill it down the pitch over OG's head but uh, OG got that crucial touch to it and just stopped that breakaway so line outs were pretty good from Wesley in the first half they didn't miss one or two and good variation, Ryan Jones. Superb play by Wesley. Folds, it's a deputized it's scrum off, it's Lowry. He's tackled by OG. Spilt in the tackle. We go back for the knock on. Really good break again. And Wesley have been very, very inventive at line out time. They're trying to find different ways around it, fooling their opposition. We see it here again off this line out. Looks for all the world like it's going to hit towards there. But instead, they just throw that little dummy, gets to O'Neill at the front. He gets that flick pass back towards Jones, who runs down that touch line almost away. He needed a winger or someone of that ilk on his shoulder for the offload and they would have been gone. But like I said, just really inventive play from Wesley, trying different things and catching Ross Gray out. Boxing wisely, all Wesley. Conroy putting his head down. Moiri 
goes right to Paddy O'Connor. The big man. So Pato O'Moiri with the box kick. And the reliable Toby Durham. And Charlie and Opton might have made a hash for this one. He's under massive pressure from Durham. That's a big power play from the number 13. And Wesley gets the penalty. Huge play there. The chasing line from Wesley was outstanding. Nocton just trying to be a little bit clever, trying to stop that ball with his foot. And there's an age-old saying, don't let the ball bounce on the rugby pitch. Here's an opportunity, bend down, pick it up. Just a little bit slow in the way that he's getting there. But look at the chase coming in there from Tony Durham, getting up there and forcing that turnover. And again, a golden opportunity in front of the post. Penalty and three points on the cards. But Wesley have been so smart in the way they've played today, Reggie. It's just a bit, bit of a pressure for them, you know. They've chased everything down. They haven't sort of uh, expected things to happen. They've anticipated. They've just gone after the ball. And St. Mary's now are 34 points to 14 up against CUS in the other game. It's a big turnaround. So Cassini... To make it three out of five for his stats today. And he gets it with certainty. Johnny Cassini. It's Wesley 18. Rossbray 5. 13 points the difference. And a wonderful start to the second half for them, getting that three points and stretching that lead out. As you said, you know, they've had a lot of disruption in this game, Wesley, but they seem to have dealt with all of the things that have been thrown with, at them from an injury perspective. And as I said, their bench coming on and, and dealing with the situation well. So great response for them. And let's see what Ross Gray have now. And Toby Durham. The player who sparked those three points. And Kagan, the stand-in captain. And it's been stolen by Ross Gray. Rory Glenn with the carry. Massive. Don't argue in center field. And Fallon lets it go to Conroy. Finley is on the park at scrum off. Nocton with the dummy. Finley goes on the short side. And Folds trying to go for the steal. Leiden for big Paddy O'Connor. Finley goes on the right to Guinan. Ichi Oji with a good line. Paddy O'Connor. Big moments for Ross Gray. Paddy Sheeran. Phase after phase, they've got to deliver here. Yeah, it's Glenn. Coffee, Joe Coffee, Durham with the tackle. Conroy, Conroy, massive defense. Rory Glenn. Incredible defense by Wesley. Defending for their lives. It's Max Flynn. Agonizingly close. Big moments in the game, yeah. Psychologically, you feel. Are they there? Hold, hold up. up. <laughs> Exceptional from Wesley to hold that ball up. Hard to know the how they managed. Moments. Hard to know how they managed to defend that one. It looked like 
they were through. Ross Gray piling on that pressure, using the big forwards to carry and try and get over that gain line every time. Somebody just managing to get in under may well have been the hooker Jones, but hard to tell from this position. But somebody just getting in there and managing to hold it up. And what a crucial moment that was for Wesley. Craig Fitzgerald, the left winger, getting the off load away to Leiden, the hooker. Paddy Sheeran in support. Fitzgerald, Craig Fitzgerald almost breaking through. Finley for Coffee. He's had a lot of carries today. Finley, Ichi Oji, Oji, still going. Ronan Leiden scores. The hooker scores for Ross Gray and a little celebration as well. Leiden came there to finish that off, but the angle from Oji, we watch it from here again as we see the ball coming from Finley. He comes on a line, come back against the defensive alignment. Brilliant run from him, but he wasn't greedy either. Realized he was just going to be held short of the line, played it out beautifully, but great awareness there from. Uh, the, the hooker when he came in Leiden just managing to get his hands on the ball but knew to dive over the top uh, where the space was right through the middle and just the response that Ross Gray needed and that gets them right back into this game so the pressure will really be on you for Wesley if Nocton can convert Charlie Nocton, and he's dragged that one. Not his best kick. It's still eight points the difference, but there's a long, long time left in, left in this fixture. Yeah, he just dragged his foot across it and pulled it to the left. Uh, so, uh, yeah, as you said, not, not his best kick. But Ross Gray, just getting a little bit of a feeling that their tails are up a, a bit after that. There's eight points in the difference here, and Wesley have had to defend quite a lot, and they've uh, brought on a lot of players off their bench already so you know by no means is this game at an end Wesley still with a lot of work to do but Ross Gray now with a real opportunity if they could get the next score then you'd have to feel that belief will go in their direction and it's Barry the outside centre the skipper today for Ross Gray Rory Glenn he's got a con on his outside Ross Gray have numbers on the right but they decide to go left Guinan with the carry. Where's he trying to cause havoc at the breakdown there? And Finley, the reserve scrum off. And Toby Durham takes it well. That's a really good kick from the outside centre, putting the pressure on Ross Gray and Finley. And that ball's not out. Johnny Cassini shaping. Lovely offload to Moran. Scored a try in the first half. Jamie Crooks is playing at scrum off that time. Lowry into contact. Lovely steal from Ross Gray. Paddy O'Connor to Glenn. It could open up here. They need to go open. There's numbers on the outside. OG calling for it. Too slow at the base. Fallon. Guinan. Nocton. And Flynn. The huge bend from the number eight. O'Connor. But numbers on the left here. Plenty. Nocton for Glenn. Knocked and off. it's gone forward. Yeah, mistake there by Ross Gray carrying it forward. You feel they were getting, really getting into that there. The players lining up to, to make those big carries, but just that little bit slow at the breakdown, getting the ball away. And that's been costly. You see there Wesley getting the opportunity to get in there and get their hands on it. And just force that little bit of an error. And now that slows things down again. We see some cramp coming in. And Wesley will look to try and slow things down at every opportunity. 
They've got the scrum here. It's definitely more direct from Ross Gray. They seem to have uh, gotten the message in to start using those big ball carriers. We see um, Flynn, certainly Jonathan Flynn, since he's come on, has gotten involved using his considerable bulk to try and carry things forward. OG as well coming in from the wing into that first receiver position. It's taking two or three defenders to bring him down every time. But they need to get that ball away from the breakdown area quicker so that they can move it out. They had numbers on the outside that time, Ross Gray, but they couldn't get the players out of the way quickly enough to move that ball and that gave the Wesley defensive line time to get organised. So quicker ball from the base of Rook and quicker movement away from there. Good news for Wesley, Liam O'Neill, the number five, back on his feet. He's also been really good today. Colin Roach wants to reset. Just in the past seven games between these sides in the Leinster League and in the Senior Cup. An average scoreline of 22 points to 18 in favour of Ross Gray. So historically, this would be an upset if Wesley can produce a result here. Cazzini to his opposite and knocked in. Johnny Cazzini looking to relieve some pressure. Ichi Oji. Really good defense by Wesley. Matching OG there. And again, we're seeing that wonderful Wesley tackling coming in. Offensive tackling, as they call it, where they're driving the players back. And Niall O'Sullivan, the player who got the yellow card in the first half for Ross Gray. Taking it into contact. O'Connor, lovely hands for Nocton. And the skip ball. OG's got some room here, though. And this is where it can be very devastating. Gets a lovely offload away. To Guinan. Finley and OG drops the bucket. Pass was just down too low. An error at a crucial moment when they were building up that momentum. We can see it again. They're trying to get that ball out into the wing, but, you know, it takes them... A little bit of time to build up ahead of steam. So, you know, from a standing start like that, the Wesley players are closing him down really, really quickly and dealing with that well. They need to get him there with a little bit of space. We've seen him coming down on that. He's standing in the out half position there on a defensive line off of this scrum. Obviously looking to try and get to Cassini. But also dealing with any pick from the base. Lovely scrum from Wesley. Cassini. Girardi, Crooks, the left winger, it's tackled by Conroy and Blaine Barry. Cazzini looking to put the pressure on. Nocton, miscued and under an enormous amount of pressure. Great game management from Cazzini, the out off. Leiden. And Ross Gray needs to be really careful here. They need a healthy exit. They're really under the pump. Finley. And what a kick that was. was Spotted it? really well. Really well taken kick. But I think Wesley will be happy enough to let that one just drift into touch there. Resettle again. Again, they're just putting so much pressure on the whole time. They're getting up there, chasing those high balls, getting in, putting pressure, and knocked and just misjudged that one entirely. And it could have gone anywhere. They were fortunate, really, to get away with that one, Ross Gray. But look at the chase coming in there from the Wesley players, getting in around it, getting their hands on the ball, slowing everything down. So I think they'll be happy enough with this position if they can work a line out of this and start to build again. Ryan Jones. Leiden snatches it. Numbers on the right for Ross Gray. Nocton. Need to get it wide. Good play by Conroy. Oh. And it's play on. Finley. Nocton. Oh 
Sean Finley again. And it's very scrappy at the moment. And Wesley get a penalty as a result. And this is very kickable as well. We've seen that Cassini is well able to get the distance. He's got a little bit of a breeze in his back here, right in front of the post. He's going to have a go at this one. And again, you can just sense it with the Ross Gray players. They're just panicking a little bit, forcing those passes, uh, trying to bring players into the game and, and, and just offloads that aren't necessarily on. So that, that, like, they need to settle down a little bit and just try and get through. There was only eight points you know in the game at that stage they really didn't need to panic all that much but you can see they're just trying to force that ball all the time trying to get it out there bringing OG in you've got to build through the phases the defensive line is too well organized if you pick and drives through the middle using those forwards again I think that would be the better way to go Johnny Cassini this game management has been superb. Big let off for Ross Gray. And yeah. Cassini, he won't be happy with himself there. Yeah, I'd be disappointed with that one. It's uh, not his best kick. It just went off the outside of his boot, went out to the right hand side. And as you said, a real let off there for Ross Gray. Wesley certainly in the ascendancy, and I think if they had got that three points, it would have just given them that little bit more of a cushion that they would have liked. Big phase of play here now coming up for Ross Gray to see if they can retain possession of this. Cassini. Another good kick from the out half. Ross Gray having to work really hard against this Wesley side. Moran. Some jinking from the number nine. He's planted in the tackle by Coffey. And old Wesley get a penalty. Oh, I think that's a harsh one. I mean, he drove, he came from behind, drove through the middle. You can see it again here. On first viewing, I thought he was just coming in counter rooking. Maybe he comes in from the side. We need to see it again. Where does he come from? Seemed to come from behind and drive through. Bit of a harsh one, you'd have to say. Referee obviously felt he came in from a side angle in his eyes, though. So Ryan Jones will throw. And Tom Gagan, well, you have to say, the number seven has done a superb job stepping in for the injured Dan Campbell, who's injured just before half time. Lovely play, O'Neill, to Gagan, the skipper. He's still going. He has a moment now for Wesley. Holseth. They score here. It'll be a long way back for Ross Gray. Lowry, who's already got a try. Moran for Hanley. Hasn't stopped. O'Neill. Ross Gray. They need a try. Get out of this. Fish. Jones. Moran goes left. Folds the loose head prop. Can they take advantage of this pressure? Wesley, if they strike now, it might be too much for Ross Gray. It's Lowry. putting his head down and what a steal that was it's good they've got to go now Rostray they've got to move it O'Connor get it out Coffee Ichioji get it out lovely offload to Fitzgerald Finley O'Connor lovely hands to Fallon huge chance gone a begging there for Wesley with that turnover, crucial turnover. And Ross Gray 
still very much in this game. It's Coffey. Sloppy, sloppy error. And from again, Ross Gray. Ross Gray just forcing it when they don't need to. Much better from them. Good turnover. I have to say the build-up from Wesley was excellent. They showed great patience building their way through the phases. Good hands from both forwards and backs working with each other, but just one error and a good turnover there from Ross Gray, and they did move it well to the wing, but then they just panic when they come back over this side again. Like, they're a long way back. They've got to just trust themselves to build it. There's still plenty of time left in this game. They've just got to trust themselves to build through those phases uh, rather than forcing those last couple of passes. And we've seen that on a number of occasions. And again, there, we just saw that last pass not going to hand and directly into touch. And from a Ross Gray point of view, they're just letting Wesley off the hook at crucial moments. But again, you have to admire the tenacity of this Wesley team. They're in at every breakdown contesting. Their defence is excellent in every way they're driving players back in those tackles and uh, the last line it didn't work well for them they need to make sure that this one this one functions up goes Collins Brian Jones it's a lovely rolling ball gaining valuable meters into the 22 Morin, Halseth, and Coffey. Oh, he did well. He was isolated. He did well to hold on to that ball. Hanley. It's another opportunity now for Wesley. They need to try cash in. Morin on the short side for Cazzini. He gets the offload away. Morin. For O'Neill, how many carries has the number five had today? It's been so dynamic. It's Collins, the replacement player. Morin for Folds. Also been a standout. Morin, Lowry with good hands. Cazzini, Cockerell, back on the inside to Ryan Jones. Oh. And can you believe it? He was so close. Just at he the did moment. so well. At the crucial moment, Jones just reaching for the line. The ball gets this large. Watch Cassini again. Brilliant hands all the way through this. Good footwork, good hands here, but that's a brilliant inside pass. Draws the player, passes that ball back on the inside. Cockrell, beautiful pass uh, to, uh, to Jones. Now look for all the world like Jones is going to reach and get that score, and that would have been the game. And that's unfortunate for Jones because he also, even though he was close to the try line, he had so much work to do and he did everything right. Really was but a good catch run. catch the ball and put it down. Yeah, he just, you know, saw that white line, went for the reach all in one movement and it just got beyond him. But Reggie, eight minutes to go here and if Wesley can pull this off, it'll be a memorable victory. Ross Gray have ten players who have either made a club or school side or a provincial side at under 18 level. Wesley don't. Mm. They've really stepped up today. They have, and I think uh, of the two sides, they've definitely been the most composed. I feel that Ross Gray have, uh, you know, they've just panicked a little bit at crucial times and maybe shown some inexperience, whereas Wesley have gone out from the very start of this game with a game plan to just get in the face of the Ross Gray players, and they haven't relented the whole way through the game. That's what they've done. Every loose ball, every tackle that they've made has been driving back players. They've showed some great skills, handling skills, passing movements, and plenty of pace there as well. Uh, and at the moment, e even though the game is by no means o over, they're, they're, they're worthy of their eight-point lead, and um, they do look like they, they could get to the end and finish this one out. Under pressure, or Osprey in all sorts of pressure. And Conroy taking the collision, the inside center. And Sean Finley now. 
And they're really not out of jail yet at all. Toby Durham, who has been fantastic. And he beats one player with ease. Wesley have this game in the palm of their hands. If they can just keep the ball or get a score in the next five minutes. Cazzini probing. It's play on for Gerardi, the Frenchman. Hugo Gerardi. Morin. Incredible. Oren Hanley. What a try that was. Wesley. Can you believe it? Wonderful finish there from Hanley. Brilliant piece of play again. And it was coming, you have to say, for some time now. They've been hammering on that Ross Gray line. They know that that's the game and how important that is. It's a beautiful line from the number eight. Timed his run to perfection. Just here, look at the offloads coming in. Again, good recycling of the ball, managing to get it back. Watch the timing of this pass. Bang, out it goes. Finds the gap straight between the two defenders. There haven't been many gaps in the defensive lines today, but that one was a beautiful line taken by Hanley and finished off to perfection. And you'd have to say no more than, or no less, should I say, than Wesley deserve after all the pressure that they've been applying in the last 15 minutes. Oren Hanley, the hard working number eight. With the score, and now Johnny Cassini. To make it more than two converted tries for Ross Gray to come away with the victory. Off the woodwork, and this game is still very much alive. Three minutes to go, it's enough for two tries, two converted tries, it's not over yet. It feels like uh, the job is almost there, though, from a Wesley point of view. You certainly feel that they'll uh, be confident about closing this game out. Holseth. And a penalty out of Ross Gray. Well, they need to push the gamble button. Yeah. And quickly as well. Well, they've got to go for the corner and try and build a line out off this and go for one last phase of play from the restart. Fitzgerald got all this kicking into touch soaks up more and more seconds and it won't really mind Wesley well, the Ross Gray mall was good earlier we saw that driving line it worked for them they've got to go to that plenty of both there so first and foremost they've got to make sure that this line of ball goes to hand Fallon. And they really need a good rolling mall. It needs to be pinpoints. Not a lot of time to work with. And Folds is causing havoc in there. And he's got it as well. Yeah, it's a huge turnover by Folds getting his hands in there and the ball, relieving the pressure for his team. And look at this for a clearance. And now, Ross Gray, that really is the nail for them. Been driven right back inside their own half. What a steal that was from the loose head, Sean Foles, managing to get in there, making use of himself. And at moments like this in the game, they're championship moments, as we call them. And they'll look back on that afterwards from a situation where they could have been defending their line with a drive from that mall and going into the last few moments maybe just the one score ahead to turn it over like that and win the ball back for his team and relieve the pressure one minute to go on the stadium clock Fallon and Ross Gray can they come away with the score been out spot today against Wesley, oh. and it's still alive, yeah. The chase is on. Jamie Crooks, the left wing. Crooks into touch, it goes. And back on the five meter, there might be time for another score, yeah. 
that's as good as a score. Watch it here again, just forcing it. Ball not going to hand. Little hack through. I thought Crooks was going to win that chase down. Just couldn't control. Yeah, I felt like he might have even been able to gather that one, but he didn't uh, trust himself to go for it and tried to use the soccer skills. Not, not quite there, but still they have a great opportunity here to put pressure on it, line out. And they've done it. They've grabbed that ball. Kagan, the stand-in skipper. Looking for try number four here. They'll believe in the next round that they'll be capable of anything this Wesley side. It's Hanley with the carry. Reen Hanley. Jamie Fish. Remarkable from Wesley. And it's a try. The referee is just checking with his touch judges, but he's given the try. Absolutely remarkable. It's an epic victory for Wesley. Jamie Fish. Yeah, you see there, Fish was just reaching for the line all the time. The referee wanted to just check with his touch judges. He was happy that the decision was correct. Initially, he had given the try. He just wanted to make sure of it. So beyond the camera angle in that post, we might have been just able to see it. But he obviously just got enough downward pressure. But again, you know, it has been all Wesley for the latter part of this game. And you can't argue with that. A wonderful um, chase from Crooks to get them into that position. And they stole the ball again at the lineup. And that was the key to it all. Putting pressure on all day long. At at moments, crucial moments, such as line-out time, scrum time, from the very first scrum, they were putting pressure on their Osprey scrum, and at every breakdown and in every tackle that they made, they were going forward. And the result is a, a, a pretty strong victory in the end for Wesley. Cassini, he's been so good today. And that is full time. It's an epic, epic victory for Wesley. They lost their skipper after 30 minutes. They've come up against the side who has 10 players who have either represented their provincial provinces or Irish clubs. Wesley have no Leinster players or no Irish club school squads players. They produced an upset the other day, scoring four tries. And what a result. And Reggie, they will believe going into the quarterfinals that they can achieve anything with what's happened today. Yeah, they have. They put in a, a huge performance here today. Really quality rugby from them from the beginning. They came out with a very positive game plan. Their plan was to disrupt Ross Gray in every way they could at breakdown and at set piece. They did that brilliantly. But more importantly, they're sending a message out to the rest of this competition that they're here, they're to be noticed, they're to be taken seriously. And whatever way the draw works out for them uh, from here on in, we'll know that soon enough. There isn't a team left in the competition that isn't going to fear this Wesley side. An epic, epic result here. Wesley 30, Ross Gray 10. And they'll be partying in the streets tonight. Oh, Valentino, that's for sure.